Hey everybody, what's up? It's Aaron Matthew here and thanks for coming to my channel. Today I'm bringing you my favorite lecture of the week and once again, it's a TED Talk. This TED Talk is by Susan Lee and it's called Why Biofabrication is the Next Industrial Revolution. So before we get started, I just want to say thank you for stopping by my channel. Thanks for hanging out and I hope you enjoy the video. Please let me know down in the comments if you know something awesome about biofabrication, um, if you've ever been involved with biofabrication, if you're studying it, if you know anything about it, share what you know with us and we'd love to hear from you down in the comments below. Let us know where you're watching from and like and if you want, please subscribe to this channel to get more favorite lectures that you might otherwise miss because we know you're very busy, right? We're all very busy these days. So let's go ahead and dive in. This is about biofabrication and this is a really interesting TED talk and I wanted to bring it to you because it's one of those types of TED talks that's paradigm shifting. It's talking about going from an old way of doing things to a new way of doing things, a new way that we don't really understand fully how to bring to fruition or manifest, but we've got this, the seeds of understanding and right now we're doing studies and experiments and creating actual tangible results and products uh, and so let's go ahead and dive into that and what the heck am I talking about and so basically Suzanne Lee in this TED talk asks what if we could grow clothes from microbes furniture from living organisms and buildings with exteriors like tree bark yeah that's pretty awesome but what does that mean so essentially it's using living organisms microbes like fungi yeast bacteria algae and things like this that can grow and form their own types of structures using specific species that have specific properties. They're able to create these types of, uh, of, of mm, let's say materials, biofabricated materials is a good way to put it. And I think the biggest factor, the biggest thing that, that, that this uh, could do is really disrupt major sources of waste like plastic and cement with sustainable and eco-friendly alternatives. And so one, uh, one example that they use in this is that their ability to produce self-organized sheets of cellulose, uh, a material that is similar to cotton. And they were able to do it in a very short amount of time under controlled conditions in a laboratory using a specific uh, species, a specific species of microbe, um, I forget what they did. They, they fermented this in a, in a liquid suspension and in a, in a way that it self-organizes itself as it grows. Basically, it grows. They feed it. It grows. And it grows into self-organized sheets of cellulose that they can then use to create fabrics. And the the extrapolate this and, and expand on this, you have something that's very interesting considering the impact of uh, fashion and fabrics and cotton has on our environment. In our, in our atmosphere and uh, industry and economies and you know it's, it's very interesting the fashion thing that's a whole other world but I think this is a very good example another example that they use is building bricks using a specific species of mycelium they inoculate something like um, what something that might normally turn into waste or another byproduct like corn stalks or hemp stalks or some kind of uh, biodegradable uh, material that they inoculate and form and cure this, this, this structure to make a brick that cures at room temperature. That means that you don't have to fire it in a huge kiln, you know, at a hot temperature, burning all these kinds of fossil fuels to create a, a single brick out of, out of sand and, and, and materials, like, materials like this. Instead, it's sustainable, renewable materials that cure at room temperature in a day or two or a week. I, you have to watch the TED Talk. I, I forget if it's you know a couple days, a, a week, but it's something that's outperformative and that's more efficient and more economic than traditional bricks. Are they doing this at scale? Yeah, there's already a few companies that are doing this, but it's still something that's very, 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 very young. But it could change the way that we create cities and it could change the way that we dress and it could change a whole lot of things because this type of technology is reaching out into lots of different aspects of how we create and materialize our world and, and build structures. And I think it's a really good direction because 
it's one step towards harmonizing uh, nature and culture, which is we're always balancing is nature and culture, this animalistic world with this human world with all of everything that's so quite difficult. And I think that I think that we can do it. I think that we can do things like that and step into this new future of harmonious living with the earth and each other. Is biofabrication going to take away all our world's problems? No. Is biofabricating materials going to change the world? Maybe not at first, but I think this is a good direction. And if you're interested in it, if you like this kind of topic, go check out the TED Talk by Susan Lee. Uh, it's linked in the description below. And once again, let me know if you know anything about biofabrication, because this is still something that's kind of new to me. I'm still learning and wrapping my head around uh, how, they, how they do it and how, how all of it works. It's quite complex. Uh, nuanced because you're working with living organisms, which is pretty cool. Uh, let me know in the comments. And once again, like, share, subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you guys next time. Bless.